Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey, and welcome to another race analysis, this being from round three of the 2021 Cal Speed Sprint Series. Now this race for me was my best result to date, finishing 20th in the A main, and I'll take you through how I got that result. So starting off in qualifying, I was in the second group, and the way it works in Cal Speed is you have three qualifying groups out of 90 people, so 30 people per session. And as expected, the last group, the third group, is always going to be the quickest since the carts are going to be warmest and the track conditions are going to be the best but it's random so it's the way it is and i was in the second group i had a decent cart and i felt like i got a good lap out of it but i was only 11th in my group so i wasn't too happy about that however of the three groups i did manage to get the best time in that cart so i did feel pretty good going into the first heat first heat race started in 13th and had a good job getting my way up to eighth place and i almost had sixth place as well so very strong race for me and i was pretty happy with that and then we came to the main race where I started in 23rd. Now the track conditions for this race were actually pretty nice. Temperature was about 72 degrees, so perfectly nice. And this time, no crazy wind. So here we are sitting on the grid, as I said, in 23rd place. And let's cut to where the race begins. Flagger waves and off the start, we get a good job passing the guy on our left. Uh, he's actually in 24, so it's not technically an overtake. So at this point, I'm thinking, let's go around the outside at turn one, because usually it's chaotic. And then all of a sudden, I actually have to end up cutting to the inside. But what I strategically do is make sure I'm on the inside for turn four, because that's always the quickest. Get a little bump on the 42 cart, and boom, past a guy already. And now look at this, coming up to turn five, we're going three wide, but I'm on the inside, shortest distance, and I'm through. My pace in this race was pretty good, and this cart felt pretty good as well. Um, 46 wasn't a very quick cart, but it wasn't bad at all. And so it was a cart I knew that if I can keep up a consistent pace, I can do well in. And all of a sudden, here we are on the back of cart 24. Normally I'd go for an overtake in Monaco, but I decided not to just because the Constantine effect on the Sportivo layout is absolutely crazy. So I knew there'd be a better opportunity to come. So I set myself up for the horseshoe and all of a sudden, look at this. I lose a position here as originally I was planning to go three wide. Once again, on the back of 24, getting that nice bump draft. And I'm going to be on the inside for the Long Beach hairpin. Now through the Long Beach hairpin, you can usually make some good overtakes. And that's what we do, get ourselves on the curb. And we don't get the best exit going up the straightaway. Then all of a sudden you can see this chaotic bump drafting mess where we're going two by two up the straightaway. And so I'm just gonna make sure I'm holding that position, use the full curb, sets the cart a little bit, but going around the outside in turns two and three, and then down the inside on four. Again, full curb, which uh, my back was sore the next day, let's just say, from a lot of curb jumping. And here I am wheel to wheel with cart 42. And we have a great battle here, just constantly side by side coming up to the Sportiva hairpin. He goes down the inside. I let him have the position because I know I can overtake into Monaco. So going through the silk turn, just positioning myself on that inside. And boom, we're on his bumper. And then I stick it on the inside and going into Monaco, pretty confident I got this. Late break down the inside, nice and simple. Or so I thought. So then all of a sudden he has a better exit coming to Horseshoe. He gets the inside, gives me a little push. Wasn't too happy about that, but that's okay. And so I'm just gonna push on him to Long Beach, but I know I need to get by him because this gap that's forming, if we are constantly gonna be battling, I'm never gonna catch the group in front. So again, down the inside at Long Beach, leaves me plenty of room, and we're set up to go wheel to wheel up the main straightaway. Heading up the straightaway, our speeds are pretty equal here, so I gotta outbreak him into turn one. I do that, he tries to cut back, doesn't really work. And then again, on the inside on two and three, which puts him on the outside for turn four, and what that ends up doing is actually giving me the position. But look at this again to turn five, wheel to wheel, exact same as the last lap. However, I've now pulled ahead. So he's looking to go for an inside in Sportivo, really late breaks, and then washes me wide. So let's take a look at what happened there. So coming up to here, I'm clearly ahead, obviously. I break, take my regular line, and all of a sudden I see him on my inside. So I wanna make sure I give him room, don't force him into that barrier. Now, if we go frame by frame here, he uses all the curb, and you can see, if you look at his uh, left foot right here, he releases the brakes right before the apex. So he was really sending it. The only issue with that is if you carry too much speed in these carts, uh, they're just not gonna have the grip. So as a result, he uses too much curb from taking in too much speed and then starts pushing me out on the outside. And all of a sudden, to my surprise, absolutely no grip right here, as obviously there's no rubber on the track. And I almost go into the tire wall but luckily I didn't. So we actually lose two spots there, but I'm on the inside for Silk and then he ends up pushing that guy wide. So I end up getting by again, but that was an interesting moment. And then this guy flies by 
right here. He had a much better exit, so he gets by. So what I'm thinking here is I'll just try to bump draft him and then hopefully we can push our way up to that group up ahead. So here we are a lap later coming up to the horseshoe and we are starting to make progress on this group surprisingly. So this bump drafting is working, he's signaling, understanding, and so we're just gonna try to push our way through. So here we are a lap later and we have finally caught the pack. And so I got a guy on my inside through horseshoe, make sure to leave him plenty of room. He ends up actually lifting through there, which is interesting. So we're going wheel to wheel. However, what this does is this puts me on the inside for the Long Beach hairpin and boom, down the inside, nice and easy. So here we are another lap later and once again, all of a sudden, I'm now caught in traffic. Uh, unfortunately, I've been having to lift a bit as there's no really good spots to overtake uh, as carts are just running two or three wide. Obviously, you don't want to overtake in a situation like that. And so again, I'm just trying to push my way through, but the issue is our pace just isn't quick enough to get by. And all of a sudden, I can see 24 raising his hand, and I'm realizing these two carts are probably gonna bump each other, so I might have a chance of making some passes. Now with this, we got about two laps to go, so I know I have to get the moves done, and once again, he gets a bad exit, but unfortunately, I have to lift as the carts just blocked the way in front of me. But I'm knowing that because they're gonna be constantly battling with each other, if I can come in, swoop in, and take that position, I'll be pretty happy. Coming up to turn four, again, right on his bumper, but not a good spot to overtake, and unfortunately, I just screw up on the braking there, and I've now caused about, I'll say it's a one second buffer. So I gotta close that gap once again. Another lap later, and once again, Still nowhere for me to overtake. However, I decided to tuck on the inside, hoping for a chance here, and was sort of get the job done. The only issue is he gets a better exit. So once again, I tried to overtake, and it's just not working. So coming up to the Sportiva hairpin, I personally don't like overtaking here. It just never works for me. But again, I focus getting on his rear bumper so I can send a move into Monaco. Coming through Silk, right on his rear bumper. And then he leaves me some room on the inside, and then we touch there, so I have to lift, unfortunately. And then again, no spot for me to overtake. So I was getting pretty frustrated at this point because obviously you could see the gap starting to build up. And once again, I'm not making up any positions. I see these two going wheel to wheel and I focus, maybe there's a chance for me to go, go on the inside at Long Beach. I go for it really late on the brakes. And actually I get the job done and get a push from 24. However, he ends up getting a better exit as you'll see we end up going wheel to wheel up the straightaway. And this is the last lap as well. So I really want to have this position. Outbreaks me into turn one. So at this point I'm thinking, okay, that's fine. There's some more turns to overtake at. It's the last lap, but I'm not feeling terrible about it. Coming up to the Sportiva hairpin, right on his bumper again, lift, create a buffer gap. And then using the full curb, trying to get that good exit. And I can see we're starting to catch him coming through silk. However, as you can see, I'm too far back to make a move into Monaco. So it's gonna have to happen at the very last turn, the Long Beach hairpin. Again, the group's pretty close. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe there's a chance at Horseshoe. And we seem to get through fine. And all of a sudden I'm on the rear bumper of cart 35, trying to give him a good push. And all of a sudden I see once again, nowhere for me to overtake at Long Beach. Now I could have gone for a move, but the chance of it being sloppy is pretty high. And all of a sudden I see by that chaos up ahead, I can actually get by or so I thought. So if we take a look at this, I'm planning on going on the outside as 35 is just going for a crazy ride on the curb and he's just bumping everyone. So perfect, I see this gap build up, I'm gonna go for it. Nope, he comes across and I hit him. What ends up happening is I lose a bunch of speed and this guy unfortunately gets by. So we would have finished in 19th, but now I got the carding DRS open and wheel to wheel at the finish line. And you can see that gap right there. Talk about a close finish. I mean, I don't think it gets much closer than that. So the gap to the finish here with Aiden Villancourt was 0 0.019 seconds. Yes, that's correct. Less than a 10th of a second. Luckily, I got the position. So my first ever top 20 in the sprint series. So quite happy with that, to be honest. So there you go. A race that was pretty chaotic, yet at the same time, not much really happened. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.